Whether it's a power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome to Rugby AM here at a very sunny AJ Bell Stadium for a historic game between the Salford Red Devils and Toronto Wolfpack. I'm really excited, we've got a great show coming up, we've got Ryan Bailey, we've got Brian Noble, we've got the very own Wagga Taurus. Wagga, how much are you looking forward to today's oh, game? Oh, it's great to be back at Salford, see some old face, faces, but very, very good contest, exciting challenge uh, with Toronto, they've got uh, a lot of super experience in the pack. Ryan, Ryan uh, Bailey, they've got Richie White in, they've got Fui Moi Moi NRL. So I think it's going to be one in the pack, me, Jonesy, because they've got George Griffin, Salford, they've got Cockchat, they've got Lama Tarsi. I honestly think it'll be one in the middle. And the best part about today is the history behind it. This is the first real challenge for Toronto Wolfpack in a prestigious game, like a Challenge Cup um, outing, and it's just a massive event, isn't it? Oh, massive. I mean, to be fair, the Wolfpack are used to putting 80 points on teams. I don't think they'll do that today against Salford. Well, he caught up with Paul Rawley pre-match. Go check this out. I'm joined pre-game by head coach Toronto, Paul Rowley. How are you, Rose? How excited are you for this challenge today? Uh, well, Wag, I don't really get overexcited. You know, I say things as it comes. The wife's always having a go at me. But, uh, yeah, just just pretty chill, to be fair. But I think uh, as, a, as a group, it's something that we needed and we're looking forward to coming up against uh, one of the high flies of Super League. Yeah, because uh, back in the friendly, you came up against Super League opposition in All FC. But since then, you've gone on to uh, you've won five out of five, and uh, you're flying high in League One. Um, what a different test Salford will bring today! Obviously, Super League experience. Who's their main threat? You reckon that today's game? Oh, they've got a few, haven't they? I think you know Carney, uh, Justin Carney, the Louis um, Murdoch Marcella on on the right edge as well. So they're running threats. Yeah. But I think all across the park, I think they'll you know they'll target our middle and uh, and then hopefully open up the space for the the outside backs later. But uh, the arm wrestle something that we've not had to get into yet. So that's going to be the challenge for us. Uh, long periods of uh, sustained pressure. Yeah, the intensity a lot around uh, Ryan Brayley, a Really good signing for you guys. You know how it ticks. Uh, obviously with Lee. Bringing your son back to your, yeah. to your team as such. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the the opportunity came, you know, for for us to bring Ryan, and uh, he's he's only a young lad. He's, he's achieving an awful lot in the game already, so he's going to score tries for us. I know, like you say, I know how he ticks. He know how I tick. So um, that familiarity is, uh, makes things a lot easier. But yeah, he's fantastic signing for us. Let's talk about the Challenge Cup last last hit out against London, uh, a league above. You came uh, came out trumps there. Um, obviously talk about the journey what the challenge cup means to your squad this year in toronto wolfpack uh yeah well personally it means a lot to me i've i've always gone hard in the challenge cup and you know and, and had good success as well so uh you know we, we'll we'll do the same approach with toronto uh, like you say we beat london broncos which is a great scalp for us um to beat white uh to beat salford today would i think that'll probably be the biggest difference in terms of league positioning that uh, anyone's ever done so uh, we're huge underdogs, but that's a refreshing change because, uh, as you pointed out earlier, we've uh, you know we've been favourites for most games we've played in. So we're looking forward to it. It's uh, it's, it's a great cup competition, and uh, yeah, we couldn't get it any tougher. But we're looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. I think it'll be a real exciting game. Uh, Salford against Toronto Wolfpack. Thanks, Rolls, for joining us, mate. Good luck. Cheers. If Salford are going to be good today and get a great performance, a lot of it is going to come down to this guy, the wrecking ball. I'm, unfortunately, I've had to get in front of him a fair few times and try and stop him from getting that roll on and a quick play of the ball. It's obviously Justin Carney. Are you looking forward to today's epic event? Yeah, it's um, a bit earlier start than what I'm used to. So um, <laughs> getting out of bed was um, a bit bit of a struggle this morning. But um, no, it's a good day for it. Hopefully the rain holds off. Um, you know, they're, they're a hungry side and... Um, you know, we got to um, get our performance up from last week and uh, I think it's a good day to, um, you know, get a good start to the 
Challenge Cup. It's a good insight there. You mentioned about an early start. It's really important. And actually, Salford near Manchester. And uh, I think I saw uh, a tweet from Wayne Rooney not too long ago saying that he had to have an early start. And it's tough getting the, the pasta down at 9 a.m. And somebody else said for 300 grand a week, they'd put pretty good chum down at 9 a.m. But it is a bit of uh, a, a, a mix match in it for us to get up and have to prepare for 12 o'clock when sometimes you play at 8 p.m. What, yeah. what differences does it make to your pep? Um, well, if you if you look at the football side of things, um, it's kind of it's, it's very different when when all their their skill base it's all skill based. Ours is yeah. like um, very very physical game, yeah. so you got to get your body and um, mind in the shape. So it's as well as feeding your physical side of things as well as your mental, and it, you know balancing that is um, you know pretty difficult when you're used to um, you know running out there at eight o'clock at night when you got the whole day to do that but you've only got one meal and you know a short amount of time to prepare yourself for a game yep and uh, just Salford at the minute you know it's really interesting I was talking up way in there's fine lines in sport and you think back to that million pound game where you managed to get in it was an epic day we were there at rugby and we got all our cameras smashed to bits it was epic right and you think about it now you're top at league playing really well how much of uh, an influence do you think that had in terms of your team spirit that you seem to be producing on the pitch this year? I think a lot of it came down to having the same core of people here. Yeah. Um, and going through that tough time only helped us this time around. Um, we've been there, done the hard stuff, um, been down in the dumps, but now we can grow as a team and not have to worry about the, you know, we had a lot of things go against us last year, but um, I think we've we've grown as a team and we know each other that little bit more yep. and um, I just think that you know um, as a collective group we've grown um, as, a, as a good club and just looking at Toronto I know you've got to uh, approach them at the minute as if they're your enemies mortal enemies uh, but it's great isn't it, to see uh, a new club transatlantic from other side of the big pond coming together and they're going through that period at the minute where they're just recruiting they're getting that team spirit but what's your thoughts on on this Toronto Wolfpack group well the thing is it, it, first of all it's a good good concept of, of the sport and how it's going to progress this game over here yeah um, but you know, we they've got nothing to lose we've got yeah. a, a lot of pride to lose because we're a Super League side they're not in Super League, but they have got Super League standard, so we're they're unpredictable side. They've um, because we haven't seen much of them. Yep. Um, you know, we got to go out there and be really smart in how we how we approach the game, and but we've got to go out and, and prepare as if it was a grand final because we don't know what they're going to throw at us entirely. Do you know what I mean? 100%, so. yeah. And I know, obviously, we saw OKR turning that Lee over. It can happen. These are a good side, so I'll let you get off, mate, and prepare. No worries. All the very best for today. Thank you. Side of the pitch, pre-game, and I'm catching up with one of my old mates, Liam Kerr. He's the winger of the Toronto Wolfpack, and he looks a little bit like a wolf nowadays as well. What, <laughs> firstly, talk us through the haircut, mate, because the man bun is, is, like, not allowed. <laughs> Well, you know me, Simo, I've had, I've had short back and sides all my life. So I just thought, you know, a new, new team, new spring of life, I thought I'd change it up, brand new haircut. And I'm, I'm actually uh, embracing it. I'm, I'm enjoying it at the minute and I'm liking the, uh, I'm just liking the attention it's getting at the minute. Rugby League's Jurgen Klopp. It's official. <laughs> Klopp is here. How's was life at the Toronto Wolfpack, mate? Because you, you're absolutely knocking pony out of teams left, right and centre in League One. Um, today... We're coming up against the Salford Red Devils. It's going to be a massive step up in quality you're going to play. And is that going to be a struggle of getting to that intensity? You know, we're under no illusions. It's going to be a, a massive, difficult and big test for us. Um, but we've prepared well all week. We know, you know, some, you know, we're putting, putting scores on teams in League One. Um, but that's not going to take away the fact we know we've got a massive game against Salford today. Um, and we're, to be fair, we're just looking forward to getting out there and showing people what we can do. Can you see maybe in the future a lot of franchises springing up around the world? So maybe, obviously, Toronto, New York's talked about already. Toulouse are doing so well in, in the championship. Can you see more expansion and, and a bigger Super League one day? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, you know, it maybe can create something like a, like a Champions League in football, hopefully. I mean, you know, in America and stuff like that, there's there's you know natural athletes over there so if the game takes off and we get athletes you know from america playing you know who knows where the game could go mate are you loving your time there you're obviously on the wing um you're a fixture in the team you're under paul Rowley. i think there's 10 lee players 
in the so, in the uh, Toronto Wolfpack team, is that has that made it easier to to bed in as a group because you've got so many people you know there? Yeah, uh, yeah, potentially more than probably any other team that you join if you've got you know a few players there. Um, but you know, life life is great at the minute. Um, even though we're in League One, um, like life is good. You know, we're enjoying every minute of it. You know, we go we go to Canada in a in a week or so. Um, and we just can't wait to get over there as well, meet all the fans and all the people in Canada and, and just see how it goes over there. Mate, we're heading to Canada for the first game. We can't wait. We're really excited. Myself and Andy coming over to meet the Toronto fans and see what Toronto's got to offer. You haven't been yet, but it must be really exciting because it's never been done before. Yeah, it definitely. It's, of course, it's exciting. I mean, uh, I was speaking to Eric you know, last week and I think he's pushing to sell out the, the first game. Yeah, it's close um, to sell out now. So, you know... You know, Canadians they naturally love contact sports, with like you know hockey and you know American football stuff like that. So I think they'll really take to it. So, like I say, I just I just can't wait to get over there and meet you know see a different part of the world, meet new people, and we'll see how it goes. Mate, best luck today. Get your game face on. We'll see right, you afterwards, right. top man. Cheers, mate. Thanks, buddy. Whether it's power station, factory, or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, spec the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome back to part two here at Rugby M. I'm joined outside the stadium by Marwan himself. Marwan, how are you? How are you, mate? Oh, <laughs> hey. hello, Jamie, mate. Hello, mate. Uh, Love your money, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Jones, it's, uh, it's a great day down here. Uh, Toronto Wolfpack in town. It's history making for the club. Mate, I'm really excited. I remember Eric Perez running around north of England telling us that he was going to take Rugby League to Toronto. And at the time, I thought, mate, all the very best. We're still trying to do it here, north of England. But look at him, it's happening, mate. We're here, we're seeing this historic game. I'm really excited because there's two really good teams as well. Wagga, we're going to speak to Brian Noble in a bit. You've got a bit of history of Brian Noble. Tell us about your joys oh. with, with Brian. What, a, what an absolute character of a blow. Uh, I did a sportsman's dinner at Kippex uh, a few months ago now and he had some great stories. Real real good bloke. Uh, the only thing with Nobby, uh, don't trust him. He, he offered me a couple of contracts. <laughs> I tried ringing him a couple of times. Uh, the first one was... I was just leaving Castleford. I ended up signing at Wigan because nobody didn't answer his phone. I should have signed four years at Bradford. That didn't happen. Ryan Hudson signed at Bradford. I didn't. And Wigan. I left Wigan. I ended up at Hull because nobody didn't answer his phone again. But I still love you, Nobby. I forgive you, mate. And what a coach. What a guy. And like you say, it. He knows uh, what it's like to uh, win the Challenge Cup as a coach, so he'll be uh, buzzing them up about, about the atmosphere in Toronto. will go well against Salford, I reckon. Can you see this? This is the first time after Catalan we're going to see a real successful franchise somewhere else in the well, world. it's a new seed, isn't it? It's a new planted seed, and Eric's done a great job. And with a backing of uh, people like Brian Noble, there's no reason why not. We've already seen Monty Gattis this week, and the real enthusiast, enthusiasm that he's got for the game, having experienced it, and that's all we need. The American dream to come to Rugby League and see it grow in the United States and the north of Canada. Right, now then, let's go pitch side and meet the one and only Brian Noble. Brian, it's great to have you again on uh, on Rugby M. And uh, I don't want to come across as over dramatic, but I'm really excited about today. And I'll tell you why. I think this game's got a real historic value to it. Because I remember Eric Perez five, six years ago running around Edinburgh, running around Leeds in north of England with a DSLR and a mate talking about promoting Rugby League in Canada. Right, and I remember thinking at the time, all the very best, Paul. Yeah, I love your zeal, I love your enthusiasm, but all the very best because it's a tough gig. And now it's real, it's happening. And I'm, I'm won't for a minute assume that the novelty's worn off for you, but this is really happening, isn't it? Everything you want in a game of rugby league is here today. So yeah. you've got ambition and dreams. You've just spoken about Eric and the dream of Toronto and Wolfpack and a team from Canada. You've got a resurgent Salford team that are third yeah. in the Super League. <laughs> yep. You've got a, some history and noise in and around that team as well. You've got a competition that's the oldest challenge competition in the country, yep. professional challenge competition in the country. And you've got two great footballing teams. So you're not being over dramatic. You're being, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. <laughs> this is an exciting game with all those if you want to be a traditionalist you can yeah. throw that in there because you yeah. can argue and debate about where the game's going and things if you want to just watch a fantastic game of footy that's going to be on show as well absolutely and then we'll have some drama we'll, we'll do some drama in crisis me and you how about that 
Absolutely, yeah, mate, I can't wait. I'm going to get really excited. I think we're doing a bit of streaming as well with Alex today. But, mm. well, one of the highlights of my week this week was meeting Monty Gattis, this out and out American guy who's coming over. He's showing his American football footwork down at uh, an amateur club like Shawcross. And the enthusiasm was just contagious. Now, you've been uh, a, a, a fantastic servant of rugby league, you're a, a mm. brilliant evangelist for the game. How, how, how enthusiastic is it, does it make you to go over there and see people like him, Americans, who could potentially take this game by the scruff of the neck and exponentially grow it in, in a new heartland? Well, let's explain to, to our, our viewers. It, Monty Gaddis, I'll use him as, as, a, as a, an example. Um, he came to the first trial in Toronto, the next Cleveland Brown fringe yeah. player. Uh, and I thought, honestly, no chance. This kid, enthusiastic, his leadership kill, skills were great. He paid for himself then to go to the next two trials. One was in Philly and one was down in Tampa. Do you know what? He got better and better and better. So there's been a lot of hurdles thrown in his way. Yeah. I like people that get older. He led the group. His leadership skills are first class. And then we picked him to play against. We've had a trial of the 20 top North Americans that we thought were going to perhaps get a contract, three, three of them, which he, he missed out there. Was that the end of the story? No way. <laughs> Keep bashing down the door. He came over here. Now he's playing amateur rugby league over here yeah. with a view to getting better and better. So it will eventually one day give him a tick in the box. There are three others from all those trials that are playing amateur rugby league in this country now. Well, if that's not an example of fortitude and never say die and keep knocking down the hurdles, I was fortunate enough to, to coach a guy that you know very, very well, Jamie Peacock. Yep. And he had more hurdles put in him between the ages of 18 to 22 where he should have given in. And he never gave in. Yep. You know, these kids, they just don't <laughs> give in. They keep coming. So it was a long answer to your short question, JJB. But I think there's plenty of bloodstock out there and there's plenty of willingness and hunger for this game. Monty Gaddis, a man who just missed out on a contract with the Toronto Wolfpack in the documentary, The Last Tackle. Monty, you missed out on the Wolfpack. You must have been disappointed. But you're here at Shawcross enjoying your rugby league. Yes, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. You know, the, the rugby league is, is just like a family. You know, all my teammates are very supportive and a lot of things have been coming up with this. As you see, my footwork drills, um, just a lot of people have been supporting my, my goals and my, my grind just to get to the top level with this and I'm loving it. Mate, back in 1800s, the late 1800s, the game of rugby union divided. One went into rugby league, one went into gridiron, American football, and we know that there's a crossover of talent. Now, you've just been doing some really good skills that I'd love to I've got my boots on and had to go. I'm a bit stiff from Easter weekend. Uh, but it's outstanding. There are some crossover skills in there that you want to try and translate from American football into rugby league. Tell us what you've just been doing. Uh, right now, I've just been doing a, a, a couple speed work drills, agility and body control things. You know, with my American football background, I definitely can see the crossover between the two. And I just want to help out everyone, just bringing some new things to the table because I could teach some people some new things and everyone could definitely teach me a lot about rugby league. <laughs> the boys have been getting involved and Seb has been trying and it's, it's really important because this set of lads who are over today um, doing a bit of footwork with Monty, they were actually part of a group that Dougie Heard set up 48 years ago. Yeah. And the, this um, exchange programme between Shawcross and the Villeneuve Club has been going for so many years. There's been some great names, pe people like Lauren Fresenu, the Catalan coach. Oliver Lima. Oliver Lima. Our own Jimmy Bray has been on the tour yeah, as well. Dan Busfield. And Dan Busfield from the Rhinos. There's some great names. And it, it's great to get those kids over. But this really shows, Jonesy, the international appeal of Rugby League now. Well, I think we've got a role to play as hosts, if you like, of Rugby League, or the founders of Rugby League, to the French people. We've got a massive appetite down there. And I'm just so excited about what can happen in America and Toronto and people like Monty who are going to go and evangelise into that nation who could potentially take this by the scruff of the neck and make it something real special. What's your goals going forward what do you plan to do in terms of evangelizing rugby league um i definitely want to take this to the highest level i can you know whether it's super league nrl league one wherever it takes me but you know i'm going to take small steps first with just getting better each game you know uh just still learning about the game learn how to catch the ball still running with the ball and i definitely want to go back to america and get the younger kids you know expose them to the game and just be like a rugby league ambassador uh, in, a, in a league that I grew up playing in, the Oxford Junior League, it's fantastic. It's the biggest league in the UK, and it's, it's great to be down here and be part of this momentous day as the league brings together the biggest sponsorship deal in its history, and it's been going a fair few years. Terry from MGM, tell us a bit about why you wanted to get involved and what this allows your company to do. Well, we've uh, been uh, asked by Kappa to uh, lead on this, uh, right across not just rugby but other sports as well. Um, 
when I uh, played football, I uh, respected the referee. Um, and I think that we need to help the juniors particularly, because if we teach them good habits now, when they become professionals later, hopefully they'll, uh, they'll uh, understand respect and it will help their lives as well. I'm a parent and I've got to admit I, I do shout quite a lot, a lot on a Sunday morning. Not as bad as the football, but it's certainly great to be giving the kids a great young positive message. Absolutely. Um, you know, what we're doing goes along with sort of Kappa, Kappa's ethos, which is, you know, grassroots yep. uh, rugby, grassroots football, but also the respect thing is a massive thing for us. Um, you know, we're all for encouraging youngsters to play sport, but to play sport in the right way. And that's respecting the referee, respecting the parents, respecting the coach, respecting the manager. And I think, you know, what we're doing here between ourselves is, is perfect for that. Absolutely outstanding, guys. I want to speak to the Yorkshire Junior guys and see what they make of this historic deal. Uh, welcome to everybody uh, to the signing uh, of an agreement, a three-year deal moving up to five um, between the Yorkshire Junior League and Kappa and MGM Sports. Um, it's the biggest sponsorship we've had since we've been, you know, going. And the main thing about it is that. Both, both companies are, are really behind our zero tolerance and want to promote uh, good things on the field. And so where teams actually don't get any discipline, we reward them with something so that there is something for them to actually go for. And hopefully this, you know, this may improve how people think on the park when they're going to get £100 a month if they don't have any discipline and that can be over the six months period worth £600 to them. Uh, also with our cup finals, they're kindly going to donate to the winning cup finalists uh, a set of uh, training tops, which again is, is a great reward for, for all the hard work that the teams will do to get to that position. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Brian, fullback number one, uh, aka the Seagull or Gollum. Yo, yeah, is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you missed out MC Pigeon Legs, but it's sweet. Uh, it's George Griffin, prop number 10, um, you know, Team Handsome, uh, Quadzilla, you know, whatever you want to call me. Uh, anything, anything good, I'm up for it. Mud guts. <laughs> Mud guts. Yeah. No, no, oh, well, you look at me for. Well, you used to be there. That's how Gary found his missus on Tinder. You wow. know, the little. Wow. Was uh, it on my line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they found each other on Tinder. It was cute. Who's. There's anyone, no one really on it, is it? No, no to be honest, I don't have it, so I don't really hang around that, that, that group. I don't know that group. Oh, Everyone's probably Lannon. I say Lannon. He's oh, a bit there. of a creep, actually, eh? He is a creep, yeah. He, he like, He's um, hung up on his ex as well, I've heard. Still. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah, mentioned her for about three hours, so. Yeah, maybe. Oh no. Oh, Jono. Jono can bang any man. Any man. That is his nickname. He will we tell can't. you any man. Mike Tyson apparently in his day. Conor McGregor now. Yeah. yeah any yeah. any man. I heard him say Conor McGregor actually. Yeah. He said because he's too light or something. I don't so, know. But any man well, in the well, world. Greg Jono, Johnson. Jono will have him. Yeah. He speaks like this as well. <laughs> yeah, anyone. <laughs> um, we're usually... Yeah, we're normally there to the death, you know. Um, depends how hard we go, really. Obviously, he's always there. Mark Flanagan loves a beer. We've got quite a good crew. He goes home early, Mark, though. Yeah, one, he gets told one, to, one, two o'clock. Mind you, I ain't been tired. out with Gary since you've been in his new relationship, so... We've not had a chance. Yeah, you haven't been out with us. We haven't really had a chance, mate. This is actually the most time we spent together in a, in a while, isn't it? Maybe one with a lot of extra weight for buoyancy in case you can use them as a raft. Or to eat them. 
Or eat them. You want cheese meat. <laughs> you want a mate to eat? <laughs> hey, if you get hungry. Yeah, you're always hungry. I'm up there, I reckon. <sighs> yeah, you stand there for ages. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in and out. Get dried and get off. I can chat. Um, Who else? You ain't got a big body to wash, have you? No. Nah. Um, <laughs> Two minutes. Coffee job. loves it. Flash loves it. It's, we've got separate change rooms, so I can't really comment on the other one, but in ours is probably, probably me, and me, and me and Flash, yeah. We, we like looking at each other, don't we? <laughs> Rugby League's quite a small place, and one thing they never do is forget where you came from. And I came from Bramley, the same place as this guy, uh, Ryan Bailey. They've been a good friend for a lot of years, and a colleague, somebody who I've gone on some great journeys with, uh, both in Super League and particularly the Challenge Cup. And Ryan Bailey is Toronto's newest signing. It's great to be able to come and catch up with you. Just had a bit of uh, food there with Brett Delaney and, and Kyle yeah, Little White. How are you, pal? And how's, your, my face. How's, how's your first week been? Are we Toronto Wolfpack? No, it's been good. I got my first hit out last week against um, Crusaders, 60 minutes, so the pins are still working and, you know, it's good to get out there with the, with the boys, you know, it's a good set of lads and looking forward to getting over to Canada now. It's really exciting. We've spoke to a lot of lads who are really attracted by the prospect of going over to Toronto playing for such an exciting trans-Atlantic team. We're speaking to Andrew Henderson, the coach of London Broncos, not too long ago, and he was talking about how tough it is to keep the core players there because London's such a distant place from the geographical heartlands, quote-unquote. Now, Toronto's miles further than that, but the lads want to go play, don't they? Because it's an exciting new prospect. Yeah, it's exciting, something different, and, you know, you want to promote the game over there as well. And you want to make a name for yourself over there, so, you know, they've got some good players in Toronto side, and, you know, they want to make a name for themselves and get some, get some fans over there, really. When it comes to drama and characters uh, in the world of rugby league, there's none bigger than yourself and big fooey fooey moi moi. What's he been like to back down with? Oh, it's great, you know. He never takes a back, backward step and he just likes dis destruction. That's all he's got all over him. He's like a big uh, JCB. <laughs> <laughs> and is it, have you got on really well with him, friends? Yeah, he's, he's, good, he's a good character. All, all the boys are good, you know. A ruthless side, you, you don't want to get beat. And, you know, it's, gonna be, it's not going to be easy for us this year, but, you know, we're looking for bigger and better things next year. And you've been in a lot of team dynamics. How does uh, the Toronto Wolfpack compare as a group? That is quite new when you're thinking about setting out their intentions, the journeys, the mission. Because we've heard uh, Paul Rowley, we've heard Brian Noble and uh, Eric Perez talk about how they want to get to Super League as quick as they can. They've got some high expectations. How does the group fit into that? Yeah, can't rush things. Or does it determine you know, to go on big and better things next year? And um, I think we've got to be ruthless all year. You can't let, you can't let you foot off the gas and... Cut it to a fight as well, but uh, I think you know, I think the good good side, and I think we'll we'll, we'll do well. Mm. We've got ourselves a little feature, Ad as Bales. Um, we spoke to Bales quite a bit in the past, and he's, he's known for being a bit of a pantomime bad guy <laughs> uh, over the course of his career. And he've had a few formidable runnings. And I wanted to ask you, Billy, who are the top five toughest players that you've ever played against? We've we've just been making a few notes yeah. here, and uh, at number five we've got Gareth Hock. Why Gareth Hock? A bit like myself, pantomime villain, went to get backward backward step, and he's been through like you know adversity, a bit like me in the past, and he's come through it and. You know, I expect him for that. Brilliant. And uh, in number four, we've got another Wiganer legend, actually, the late, great Terry Newton. Yeah. Tell me a bit about Terry Newton and why he's, why he's in your top five. He was a great hooker, wasn't he? He just went as much as you could rely on to make, tack make tackles for you and yeah. get stuck in there. And um, I just think respect for him too. And I think we've had some runnings with him as well. I've had some, well, obviously, when I was younger, I had a few scraps of him, but, you know, it was only small, but he used to give, give, give it a good go, so, yeah. He did. Well, yeah. I remember when he was at Leeds, when I first signed for Leeds, he was at Leeds, and uh, when I played against him, if you tried striking football, he'd yeah, smash yeah. your shins, just kick a lot of you, and uh, they don't do it anymore. No. Well, just, just really, it's something I've, I've mentioned quite a lot, that not, not the game's not become sanitised, but the competitors and those real angry little men don't seem to be about anymore. Do you find that? Yeah, they do, a little Terry, a little Jack Russell's out there, but yeah. we've been scouting the game, but I think they've been bring it back a bit now, don't they? Because it's getting a bit, um, getting a bit stale down there in the, in the scrums. And uh, at number three, we've got the big Fielding, Stu Fielding. Stu Fielding, yeah. He had, he had a brother called Jamie, James Fielding, who was about nine foot tall. He was the one who went on to be uh, a formidable international player. He was one of the best in the world when he was at his zenith, uh, Stuart Fielding. Hard as nails, a fellow prop. Why have you got him in there? He used, to be, he used to be battle against... Um, Big Barry McDermott when I first started at Leeds and 
I look, look at him and think, oh my God, he's like, he's like you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. But, <laughs> you know, they, he went for a year where no one could tackle him. I thought, you know, he was one of the great players. And like I say, he's one, he's one down there, one of the legends. You couldn't even put the ball yeah, on the floor. Couldn't even touch him now. <laughs> like a shield running or something. It, it was unbelievable. Force field super hero. I don't know what it was. Shield field in most unbelievable. Now, somebody close to home, another Leeds lad, one of the uh, proverbial warriors of the game. And for me, the Alexander the Great of Rugby League who wanted to conquer the old world. And that's uh, Jamie Peacock. Yeah, I played against him. I'm with him. You know, he's one of them players that you look at his stats and you can't replicate what he's done. And you think, how's he doing that? Like 38 ups and like 45 tackles, and you try to go out there and replicate it in your car, and that's why he's one of the greats, and that's why I respect him. And you know, he's one of the fittest props I've played with, and you just think, wow, just just one of them players, wow, isn't it? You mentioned fitness. People don't usually associate props with fitness, but it's certainly a part of the mental toughness that you need to be able to perform at that sort of levels. And I remember when we uh, used to do the five minute run, it was like Kip Tanui, this guy, he'd smash everybody all the time because you've got a decent engine. Yeah, I think there's only yeah. Mark Holder who used to meet yeah, you. That's it, yeah. But fitness is a big part of it as well, isn't it? Did he inspire you, JP? Yeah, he did. Obviously, I was, I was already naturally fit and obviously JP was fit, but the extra work he'd off, off, off the field and you know after training, you think, yeah, I'm going to have a piece of that and it made you, made you a better player. Obviously, I took things for granted sometimes, me, but, you know, them little extra bits make you into, a, you know, elite player, and that's why what it was. And uh, in number one, the big drum roll, somebody who is right up there with Jamie Peacock, mastered the NRL, is a legend of the game. Legend gets overused for me, and it is, of course, Adrian Morley. He was a monster at his best. Yeah, all-time great. I used to sneak over the, you know, South Stand... I sat on wall to get in, into the game, into the game to watch the game. I got banned from the stadium. Uh, um, but then I used to watch him when I was younger in the South Stand, going, "Go on, Moz, you know, you know, childhood hero." And remember the time when Cassidy elbowed him in head and cut his eye, and you know, I'll cause tears. And you know, one of my heroes, like getting, getting smashed. But you know, I respect Moz. You know, went over to Australia and did both sides, and not a lot, of, not a lot of forwards can do that. We all have those moments when we're on end of an hiding as well. I've been on end of most of I'm on end of them most weeks, to be honest with you. Uh, but there is one particular moment when a, a huge player, Bradford player and all, give you a bit of a big shot. Who was it? And just tell us what you remember. It was Joe Vangana. I don't remember a lot, to be fair. I think we kicked off at Oddsill, and that was it. <laughs> I was on my back. I think I put my head wrong, read it, read it wrong place and knocked me out, and I would try to get up, but nah, legs are none of it. That one of the biggest hits I've ever had off Joe Vangana. You know, it was like a like a fridge in it, yeah. like a big refrigerator. It was just that awesome foursome. Um, there was him, there was Paul Anderson, Peacock, Brian McDermott. Uh, they were just unbelievable, yeah. that Bradford side. And then you've got the wingers as well, Vinacolo. Um, they were just unreal, unreal, that Bradford side. How did they do it? Uh, it was a shame that it, it's not quite still there. Yeah, it was uh, a massive derby, wasn't it? It was, it was a ma massive derby. Well, okay, Bills. Yeah. That's awesome. It's a bit of an insight into you guys out there who are Ryan Bailey's, hard as nails, tough characters that he's uh, played against over the course of his career. Maybe uh, texting, tweeting, whatever it is, send us your top five and uh, let us know what you think. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. I'm Gary Arida and I'm uh, 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 number 14. Yeah, it's shall take it. Hooker. Hey, no, it's 24. Half back for Wigan. Williams. Yeah. Uh, Our coach. Roller. Uh, Our Edith Hart. Noble. Uh, <laughs> Cock Hall. Castleford. <laughs> There's a lot of players. Gail. No. Hot Harwood. Rock Warren. Castleford. Yeah. Wellington. Tom. No. Quite old. Quite old. Quite old. Lynch. Yeah. Okay, you say Salford for zero game. Godwin. Yeah. He just been dropped for this game, the Arthur. Kinda. Yeah. Arthur has his saints. God, I. 
Uh, back for six. Smith or? No, other than. Uh, the man's got one. The other one's Todd Young, Challenge Cup, going out here, she sent. Ah, ha, it's going to be a good You slay it on the sails, Salford. You take it to the hard back. Oh, um, Snarl. Yeah, hey, Snarl. Yeah. <laughs> Robinson. Yeah, Linger. Yeah. Uh, Linger, you slay me in the old league days. The Irish contest now for Sky Sports. John Wells? No, the Linger. Oh, Brian Carter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, legend, what we saw it in the late lacking Super League. <laughs> Number. Uh, Wigan Warriors. Uh, Wigan Warriors. Sean Lockley? No. Which one? The old one. The old one. Who's <laughs> the old one? He's, he's lap played, sir. Uh, oh, Andy Farrell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ziggy's uh, quite an cry. Big, well, big Bad Wolf? Well, Fitness, he shares it with him. What? He's quite a bit. Well, Fitness. <laughs> oh, um. <laughs> if he wants a gym with him? Yeah. Oh, you play here? Yeah! What? <laughs> no! Stephen Wilde, you ball then! Post-match, uh, right here, AJ Bell Stadium. Welcome back to Back 4. Craig Gall, just coming up a little bit short today, mate. Yeah. How was it out there for you? Uh, frustrating, obviously. Um, you know, Dobbo and uh, Louis took them around the park pretty well. Um, you know, we was let down with the ball today, uh, end of second half. But you know, it's it's a lesson learned. Twelve men, Salford. The ball was in your court. It was it was yours for the taking today. I felt, but probably that expansive rugby you played in League One, they just smarted up and and they controlled the game. Are you a little bit disappointed? Do you, do you, do you think you could have done more? Yeah, 100%. You know, I'm going to be disappointed after a loss. Like I say, we, uh, we learned a few lessons uh, today going into the rest of the campaign. So, you know, we'll have to go back to the board and see how we're going. Mate, we've been broadcasting over the, the internet to over a million people at Sports Bible. Loads of engagement, loving the game. What does it mean to you to be club captain of the Toronto Wolfpack? Yeah, you know, proud as punch when, when Rolls asked me to be captain. Uh, jumped at the chance. I've not quite had it at any other club uh, leadership, so... I uh, really enjoyed it. So for fans getting stuck into the boys today, mate, best of luck. We'll see you over in Toronto in the next few weeks. Well yeah, done, mate. I'm lucky. Wag is outside with the fans. I'm joined pitch side by Michael Dobson. Uh, mate, you're playing out your skin this year. Is this uh, a bit of a renaissance for you? You've come back in some great form. Yeah, I don't know, mate. I'm just uh, hanging in there. Obviously getting old now, but uh, you know, we're playing good, good footy. And, and uh, we <laughs> no, we're hanging in there, so that was a tough game. Mate, it was a tough game. The Wolfpack came with some heat today. Marwan, I've just grabbed you in here for a quick chat as well. Were you impressed with the Wolfpack? Yeah, very impressed. But we're far better than them, mate. It's, it's a good though for the game to have... The, uh, no, 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 seriously, I mean, it's great. It's great to have a big brand like Toronto in, uh, in Rugby League. And, you know, I, I sincerely hope that in three, four years from now, they will be in Super League because Super League does need big brands. They need the brands, the Torontos, the Liverpools, the Leeds, the Coventrys, the Manchesters in the competition. There's a lot of harmony at the club, a lot of players signing longer deals, the coaches signing a new deal. You're really pulling this club together for the future. Well, mate, just a quick word about this guy. A lot of people wrote him off last year as a Super League halfback. Now, this year, he's one of the outstanding halfbacks in the competition. And uh, I'm trying to uh, talk him into staying with us for uh, at least a couple of more years. And um, no, but uh, listen, I think that million pound game brought us together like no, uh, nobody else could have brought us together the, the way that million pound game brought us together. And yeah, there's a lot of harmony. Credit doesn't come for me, to me, the credit to, to the boys and to the coach. Double, you've been here a few years, oh obviously. God. You're done now, Marwan. Thank you, yeah. mate. Top man, Marwan, stealing the match there. It's always interesting with, with Marwan Kukash at, at the club, and you've been here for quite a while. And is, is this the best team you've had out on the park and the, the best group of boys you've had? Sure is, yeah. Um, 
as you would have saw today, we're all playing together, we're working hard for one another. And yeah, it's a good harmony in the team and Marlon's got getting things right off the field as well and makes, makes it a lot better for us on the field and we're doing our job at the moment on the field. But it's a long way to go, but we're, as you saw today, we're digging in for each other and we keep doing that, we're going to win more games than we lose. From a player's perspective, tell us how it felt going into that million pound game because obviously it, it's your career, it's your, yeah. your livelihood, it's your family. There must have had a lot on your mind, a few sleepless nights. There was, mate. and. Um, yeah, I don't want to be involved in that sort of situation again, so we'll, we'll leave it at that, but um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. UK Red Fire and Security Fan Camp, joined by some Salford fans. How you feeling after that victory, boys? Pleased, pleased. I backed him at back Toronto, plus 26, so yeah, it's, it's all good. Days. What Happy do you days. reckon to Carney sending off? I don't know what he did, it was dissent, allegedly. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, I so, didn't see it, didn't see it. Really. It's alright, I just said UK Red Fire and Security Fan Camp. I'm joined by a very, very, very good character here, Salford fan. What do you reckon to today's game, mate? I think we got away with it, really. They tried our Toronto, they were well on top half the game, pressured us. I think we took it a bit too easy on them. Must have been tough for the boys to back up from, obviously, the defeat at Catalan, the loss to team's preparation. So, to be fair, Toronto playing really well, so really good win for Salford, I reckon. It was a great win for Salford, I'll take that all day. Who are your man at match then, out of the boys? Uh, Salford's man at match? Yep, Salford's man at match. Well, then. Well, yeah. well done, mate, good win. Yeah. Enjoy your beer. No, where's Toronto fans? Where's the Wolfpack? I'm struggling to find Toronto fans for some strange reason, so I'm joined by another very happy Salford fan. How are you doing, mate? All the better for seeing you, Wagger. Thank you, better. mate. Good to be back. I remember Good your first back. game. Red card around the back of the oh, top shot. Oh, I know what? <laughs> mate, I didn't even hit him. I gave him a little kiss. I went, <laughs> oh, that's well, all I did. That's what it's like. Mate, oh. you must be happy, though, after oh, that, because oh, Toronto, oh, Paul Roller's got them playing really well. They've got some world-class players, haven't they? Oh, they're a top team. Top team. What do you reckon to today's win, mate? Are you buzzing? Good <laughs> Salford! Yes! I yeah, the Salford Reds are rising! Oh, yeah! Yeah, yeah! Oh, yeah! Yeah, yeah! Oh, yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Well done! Awesome! Good win! I need some Toronto. I see the Salford Reds are rising! I see the Reds are on the way! Don't go out tonight unless you wear the white! I see the Reds are on the way! I see the Salford Reds are rising! I say the Reds are all the way. Don't go out tonight unless you run away. I say the Reds are all the way. Surely. Salford, 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 Salford. They're still as mad as ever, these Salford fans. That's why I love them. Where's the wolf pack when you need them? Any Toronto fans over there? Still struggling with wolf packs. Where are they? Woo! Come on, Wolfpack. There must be one. One Wolfpack. I must be able to find one. Finally found a Wolfpack fan. What's your name, mate? Matt. Matt, are you from Toronto? No. <laughs> no. How do you get how are you supporting Toronto today? Where are you from? Uh, I live in Leeds. My wife works for the club, so we're like a Wolfpack family. Wolfpack family. What do you reckon to the season so far? I've made some really good signings, Ryan Braley, that you're playing really well. Disappointed with today? Uh, no, I think the boys uh, gave it a real good go and they had a great dig. Uh, and um, at the end of the day, we're playing someone who's third in Super League, I think, you know, and we're in League One. So I think they gave a really good account of themselves, showed that, that they've definitely got the quality to, to rise up the leagues. And um, yeah, onwards from here. Can't tell you the rest because it's X rated. Why do I want to work on Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry.